Well, breaking news out of Minneapolis this afternoon, Derek Chauvin, the police officer who was seen on the video kneeling on the neck of George Floyd, has been arrested. Chauvin is being charged with third degree murder. Floyd died while handcuffed in police custody after pleading that he could not breathe. The police come the arrest comes after three days of protests, which escalated in violence as demonstrators torched a police precinct that had been abandoned by officers. Well, Congressman Kevin McCarthy tweeted about an hour ago. He says George Floyd should still be alive today. We can honor his memory by healing our broken communities by mending radical divides and by building America into a more perfect union that we know it should be. Ripping a city and a country apart only deepens that wound. And Bakersfield Police Chief Greg Terry has also responded to the incident, condemning the actions of the officer and praising the criminal investigation. His tweet reads in part, quote, Police officers have a legal, ethical, and moral obligation to use only proper methods of arrest. While our officers have already been well-trained in this area, upon seeing this Minneapolis video, I immediately directed that our training staff review this incident. With every Bakersfield police officer for a clear understanding that such actions are not acceptable in our society. I'm sorry? You're under arrest. Okay. Do you mind telling me why I'm under arrest, sir? Why, why am I under arrest, sir? Officer, he's on the air right now. Just hours ago, journalists with CNN have been released after they were arrested while live on air reporting about the protest in Minneapolis. Minnesota State Patrol arrested CNN reporter Omar Imanez, a producer and a camera operator. Now, during that live report, he fully cooperated with authorities and offered to move if he was standing in the wrong area. Another CNN reporter was a block away and was not arrested. Well, over in Kentucky, at least seven people were shot as protesters marched through Louisville to protest the deadly shootings of a woman in her own home. Police say all the victims were civilians and one person is in critical condition. It is unclear who fired the shots, but police say none of the officers discharged their service weapons. Hundreds of people came out to support Brianna Taylor and her family. Now, the 26-year-old emergency medical tech was shot eight times back on March 13th after Louisville narcotics detectives knocked down her front door to search her home and no drugs were found. Well, a protest over the death of George Floyd may take place in Bakersfield today. 17 News has seen several posts on social media with the image saying Black Lives Matter activists will protest outside the Bakersfield Police Department in downtown Bakersfield. We have not yet heard from organizers about what time this protest is expected to happen. The post says, bring signs and your voices to stand up and demand justice for George Floyd and his family and every other black person living in fear in America. Well, back here at home, Kern Public Health has reported 69 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the total to more than 2,000. But less than a third of those are currently infected with the virus. Now, more than 600 people are recovering at home and another 44 are in the hospital. 37 people have died from COVID-19. Now, more than half from local nursing homes. Nearly 1,400 people have recovered. More than 23,000 tests have come back negative and more than 900 tests are still pending. Now, as we mentioned, a majority of those deaths come from local assisted living facilities. Kingston Healthcare Center has reported 54 healthcare workers and 80 residents that have tested positive for COVID-19. 18 residents have died. At Valley Convalescent Hospital, 19 healthcare workers and 40 residents tested positive and four residents died. Orchard's post-acute has one confirmed death. That's 23 deaths of the 37 total for the county, or 62%. County leaders are frustrated that some state-regulated homes continue to struggle with curbing the number of cases and deaths. Kern County Administrative Officer Ryan Oslop says the state should have done more during the beginning of the outbreak to protect the most vulnerable in our facilities. I would have liked to have seen the state of California deploy uh, more resources, uh, put an army of people out uh, throughout the state in the earlier days of this pandemic, that they had the, the appropriate PPE, that they had the appropriate hygiene controls and monitoring 
and that testing uh, was being done. Uh, that should have been done in the early days of this, this pandemic, and I'm frustrated by that. The state had sent down a team of medical professionals to help Kingston Healthcare Center meet its staffing needs. But as of Wednesday, that team has left the facility because Kingston officially submitted a plan indicating they will be able to achieve the required staffing on its own. Meantime, the county continues to send its own team to help out several facilities throughout the Golden Empire. We reached out to the California Department of Public Health and they say they are working on a response. Well, over the past several days following the death of George Floyd, there has been an outrage in Minneapolis and across the nation. Now, here at home, protests, protests is set to take place this evening. The First Amendment allows the protest. It allows us to express ourselves, but not to use that to justify criminal activity. And looting is criminal. It's against the law to steal. And those basic right. protests are fine within the law, but not looting, not stealing. And it's sad. Dr. Tunson advocates for a transformation policing model. The idea is to forge positive policing partnerships throughout the community. Community members and police officers work together to understand one another and find a common ground. We must come together, we must really share and interact positively with one another. The partnerships that I talk about between police and community must come to fruition and we must understand that's the only way to proceed. This is the greatest country in the history of mankind. We need to show that. Yes, there are some issues. I understand that from my time in policing. I also understand that as a young boy from South Central Los Angeles. He says people need to obey those laws. This is an extremely difficult time and we are all dealing with a lot right now. He encourages us to come together as one to find a common solution. Well, new at noon, police have seized hundreds of pounds of marijuana at a home in downtown Bakersfield. Officers served a search warrant at around 9 this morning for a home near the corner of 18th and Union. They found an indoor marijuana cultivation building. Ten people were detained. Police seized 775 plants, 160 pounds of marijuana, and a firearm. Well, police need your help in finding an auto theft suspect. According to officers, Wednesday evening, a victim started their car near the corner of Oak Street and Chester Lane. They quickly left the car, and when they returned, that vehicle was gone. Now, the vehicle has since been found. He is described as a white or Hispanic male between 30 to 40 years old, 5 foot 10 to 6 feet tall. He has black shaggy hair and an unkept beard. He was last seen wearing a black Nike sweatshirt, dark workout pants, and gray and white sneakers. If you know who this man is, you are asked to contact BPD at 327-7111. And new information on a shooting that left one dead. According to Bakersfield Police Department, two accused killers shot 28-year-old Duran Kenneth Dunhill McDowell outside a home on Banderello Way on Wednesday. The search is over for those two suspects after a standoff in Bakersfield. This was the scene along Moeller Road as police searched for Douglas Hutchinson and Manuel Ruiz Jr. yesterday. BPD says both suspects were discovered hiding in a trailer and they eventually surrendered. Well, a woman suspected of animal cruelty is back in court. Elaine Rosa is at a preliminary hearing. Now, you may remember video surfaced in January showing her on an electric scooter while dragging a dog behind her. Court documents say the dog was hurt and Rosa took it to an urgent care hospital, but she lied about what happened over fears she would be denied service. Photos and video of the incident quickly went viral and protesters calling for her to face criminal charges. She faces a felony count of animal cruelty. Now that hearing is expected to last several hours. Well, today, Kern County welcomes a first-of-its-kind recovery facility. Now, Kern Behavioral Health and Recovery Services debuted that brand-new peer-led facility. The recovery station will provide a safe place to recover from addiction and receive mental health and substance use services. Now, it is similar to a sobering station. A recovery station is a place where people who are under the influence can be transported from law enforcement, hospitals, crisis centers, flood ministries, homeless centers, the mission, and they can be brought here while under the influence where they can sober up, be, um, be talked with, talked to by peer staff who will then help them in a warm handoff to services for their medical, substance use, and mental health needs. 
It is, it is part of the continuum of care that are needed and necessary to humanely treat as people, by people, the people on our streets. The station will open to the public June 1st and serve those 18 years and older. Kern BHRS plans to open a second recovery station in Delano. Welcome back and we're talking about our forecast and a cool down that's going to be on the way for the weekend. It actually starts today. I know yesterday we were hot with those triple digits. Today we're going to be close to about 100. We might even keep it in the upper 90s. We are in the 90s in a lot of valley locations now. Arvin at 95 degrees. The one thing we're also seeing today is a little bit of cloud cover around the area. Wasco at 91 under mostly sunny conditions. And then uh, Fraser Park, uh, we've got mostly sunny skies. 94 in Bakersfield at this time with a West Northwest wind at 13. Humidity value up a little bit as well, 22%. Here's a look at other temperatures, and we've got 80s and 90s. Uh, Button Willow showing 79, though, and then we've got 70s and 80s into the mountains, 86 in Tatchby, 89 for Lake Isabella, and mid 90s out of Ridgecrest. We are seeing a few clouds drifting in from the south and west. Radar is picking up a few echoes, but I believe those are false returns. Uh, basically, the radar beam bounces off the mountains and creates that. So, not looking at any rain. You can see the area of low pressure offshore, though. It is swinging some of those high clouds our direction. And temperatures today will cool all around the state. 82 in Sacramento, 96 in Fresno, 70 south in LA and San Diego. Still quite warm to the east of us. Phoenix today at 110. They can keep it. So over the weekend, we are going to see the influence of that low offshore, and then we have a couple of other systems that are developing north and west of California, and that is going to help the cool down and bring some clouds in as well. We also have a wind advisory until uh, tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. for the uh, western half of Kern County from the area of Taft, Button Willow, and also Lost Hills, so expect some breezy condition. So cooling down this weekend back into the 80s, clouds will move into the area by Sunday, and we should remain dry. We're putting a slight chance in there, and then no triple digits for the next 10 days. That's uh, music to my ears, and I'm sure yours as well. Today, though, it'll be close. 99 in Bakersfield, 98 McFarland, 97 in Buttonwillow, Taft to 96, and then for the mountains in the Kernover Valley, uh, 83 in Fraser Park, 86 in Stallion Springs, 90s into the Kernover Valley, 97, Lake Isabella, Kernville at 96, and then for the desert, a little bit breezy here, winds gusting around 45, 92 in Mojave, still quite hot in Ridgecrest at 103. Here's your extended forecast. Tomorrow, 85, and then some clouds. Sunday through about Wednesday. And you can see Tuesday, Wednesday have a 10% chance of a shower in there. Again, the models uh, are not real confident on bringing any type of rain our direction. But the good news is 80s in the forecast. Mountain forecast, also cooler. Lower 70s tomorrow. A little spike on Sunday. Some clouds uh, will move in Sunday through about Tuesday. Slight chance of a shower Tuesday. Windsor for you as well. And the Kern River Valley forecast from the 90s today into the 70s tomorrow. And we're going to be in the 70s to lower 80s through next Thursday. Thursday, and you also have a slight chance of a shower Tuesday and Wednesday. So the big headline in the forecast heading into the weekend is the cooler weather and also some clouds moving into the area as well by Sunday. Have a great weekend. We'll be right back. In your 17 Business Watch, the new program aimed at helping local businesses to get back on their feet is already making payments. And at this time, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, these forgivable loans are being issued. Uh, there are businesses today that are being uh, written uh, uh, checks um, or, or having money uh, uh, wired into bank accounts today. County Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop couldn't give exact numbers, but he said the program is very busy since applications open Tuesday. The county is working with four banks to give forgivable loans to small, locally owned businesses. The loans must be used to pay employees and help pay the cost of rent, mortgage, and other bills. Now we have more information on our website, kget.com. The National Hockey League announced plans this week to salvage the season with an expanded playoff tournament starting sometime this summer. But no Californian teams are invited to play. The LA Kings, Anaheim Ducks, and San Jose Sharks didn't qualify. No luck for the Bakersfield Condors either. Even with the NHL starting up, the AHL is canceled for the rest of the season. Right now, the Condors plan on playing in October, but are ready to postpone the season, according to Condors president Matthew Riley. At the beginning of the season, you know, I don't know. It may be a little different that 
you know, normally we might have a, a meet the players party or some things like that. We may not be doing that at the beginning of the season. So it may be a little bit different uh, from the get go. But, you know, if everybody kind of, you know, sticks by the rules and works together, uh, you know, eventually, hopefully we can get back to some normalcy. Um, but certainly the, the, the safety of the players and fans has got to be first and foremost in our minds when we do start to have games and allow people back into the arena to see them. If Bakersfield area NHL fans want a rooting interest, they'll want to cheer for the Edmonton Oilers, who have a number of former Condors on the roster and might even have a few more from this year's team. Now, if you're really missing the Condors, tune in Saturday at 6 when TV17 broadcasts the team's January 2017 game against the Ontario Reign played outdoors at BC's Memorial Stadium. That's as close as fans will get to the real thing until quite possibly October. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon.